everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Fiddle. I am an artist, a crafter, and a miniaturist that likes to teach others that they can be creative too. Link to scavenger hunt patterns and materials is listed in the description box below. And please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment. It really helps me out a lot with YouTube's algorithm. Okay, are you ready? Let's go. We are continuing with part two of the sewing machine. You will not need your pattern for this part, just some of the materials from the list. Don't throw them away though, because we will need them for part three. You will need the one and a half inch square dowels, and we're going to draw out a circle as big as you can on the bottom, and this is going to be how big the base is going to start. After you've got your circle drawn, put your pieces together without glue, just dry fitting, and set them on top of your sewing machine where you want them. If you have any trimming, go ahead and do that now. Then we're going to glue them together in the shape of an L, being mindful of the circle that we drew as the base of the sewing machine. Then we're going to wrap tape all the way around it or use clamps. Once it's finally dry, take the tape off and we can draw out the shape of our sewing machine. I kind of thought it looked like a blow dryer while I was making it. I think that's the best shape to go for. After you get the base shape drawn out in pencil, go over it with a marker so that way your lines will stay a little bit longer through the sanding process. Now the decision to Dremel or not to Dremel. Ultimately, I decided to use the Dremel. If you don't have a Dremel, you can always sand it. I got the base shape out with it, but most of it was done by hand sanding. Lots of sanding. The next piece that we're going to work with is the end point of the sewing machine, which is the skinny round dowel. Make a point at one end, this is where the imaginary needle would be. The other end can be left as is. We're going to be putting an eye hook in there. What we want to do is create a groove in the other half of the sewing machine to fit in the round dowel. If you have gaps or your circle is not perfect, that is okay. We can make some wood putty and fill it in later. Once you have your groove set, set your machine on your table and adjust the needle point to where it's just off the top of the table. Mark out where that is with a pencil, glue them together, and secure it with tape until it's fully dry. Once it's dry, put it on the end of a pointy stick so that way we can paint the whole thing. But the first piece we're going to paint is actually the base of the sewing machine. This is the one piece that I forgot about from the pattern. <laughs> All the pieces that I am painting black, I'm using a metallic black on it. It has like a silver sheen to it. It works really well for imitating cast iron. Next, do a base coat on both the legs. Once that's dry, go over the gears and the buttons. And if you wanted to, even the feet with a another metallic color. I think this one is an antique gold. Set them aside and mix up some paint or whatever color you're using to paint the top of the desk. I am using a watered down brown with a little bit of that metallic black in there. And I started on the underneath side of the table to make sure I had the color right before I put it anywhere you would actually see. As for coverage, I pretty much painted the whole thing, except for my bamboo sticks. They have their own pretty color. Allow for some dry time, and we're ready to start putting it together. Using super glue, attach the sewing machine base to the sewing machine. Then, using a pokey tool, poke a hole in the side of the sewing machine where the round knob will be. Another off of the downward arm, where we're going to be putting our thread. They just have to be deep enough and big enough to secure in a few bits of wire. Now add super glue to the base of the sewing machine and attach it to the tabletop. Where you put it is completely up to you. I put mine more towards the front. The next piece we'll need is the laser cut gear. What I did was take the center out of a big one and painted it gold. This would be the adjustment wheel on the side of the sewing machine. Now you will need a flathead sewing pin and a seed bead. What you're going to do is put your wheel and the seed bead on there, trim it with pliers until there's just enough sticking out that you'll be able to fit it in the hole we made earlier. 
an E6000 super glue combination would probably be best here since we are trying to glue metal to wood. Now we're ready to glue the legs on. To do this, we're going to take the end of our dowel and stick it in between the slats of our bottom drawer. For the legs on the other side, match them up with this side and they should come out pretty even. We're going to need the spacer, bead, and dowel rod for the other side because we're going to be wrapping wire around it for the foot pedal. It's basically two spacer beads on each end of maybe a quarter inch piece of dowel. Its whole purpose is to hold the wire framework for the pedal. You will need a thick wire for this. I used a copper coated wire, not sure of the size, but you'll want to make a hoop at the very end of it just big enough to fit around the peg. Then holding the peg next to the sewing machine, measure down how far you want your pedal to be and make a right angle. Bend it about a pliers width apart, make another right angle, and now we're going to hoop it back around kind of like uh, a horseshoe. This gives an area for you to glue the pedal to. Once you're back at the right angle that you made before, go ahead and make another right angle to continue out towards the other side. Of the Check your work after each bend to make sure that you're still where you should be. At your last bend, go about a pliers width and make another right angle going back up towards the top. If your pieces aren't all straight, lay them flat on your table until you can get them pretty much aligned. Then take your wires and poke out that little nub that we're supposed to use to put the pedal on. Once we have it set, we can attach it to the sewing machine. The bolt goes in between the drawers just like we did for the legs. And on the other side, we're just going to wrap the wire around the bolt and glue it down. Let it dry and then we can attach the pedal. For this I used a piece from a printer, but if you don't have anything like that, then a piece of cardboard painted a metallic color would work absolutely fine because I really think that this was that's what this is, is a thick chip board with a metallic coating. It's starting to look more and more like a sewing machine. The next piece we're going to add on is the base plate for the needle. And for this I just use a teeny tiny piece of aluminum from the baking pan that I've been using for projects for a while now. And super glued it in place. I think mine was off just a tad. But it still gives the impression that that's what it's there for. If you have any areas that you need to touch up paint, this would be a good time to do it. I decided while I had the paint out, I was going to go ahead and paint the underside of the petal to cover up the black. I was actually surprised how close the paint was to the color that was already on the petal. Next, you'll have to poke one more hole in the sewing machine, and that is right there on that downward extension arm. It really is just another place to hold the string. Next, you'll need to make two eye hooks to fill those holes. I used a thin copper wire for this. Speaker wire would be just a little bit too thin, so um, some sort of jewelry wire would be best. I held mine in with just super glue. However, I think E6000 and super glue would be a good idea. While you're gluing it in, make sure to keep in mind which direction the thread coming from and which direction you want the thread to go. Next we need to make the thread spool and how I did that was using my cutter to measure against what I thought would be about proportionate to a spool of thread for the size. Then use super glue to glue it in place. I love that the wheel spins. I just wish that I would have been able to make the pedal rock back and forth. I think if I took more time and worked with the wire a little more to make it an actual loop, I wouldn't have to glue it, and then the pedal would be free swinging. Just a thought for anybody that'd like to try it. I think, I think I'm going to have to investigate that further now that I've said that. I will look into it later. Anyways, the next thing I did was draw random swirlies on the side of it because I know that most of the old sewing machines have some sort of writing, especially Seeger, right there on the side of it. But because I didn't want to like try to make it a brand or 
anything like that. I wanted to keep it a little generic. I just took a paint marker and made random swirls until I was happy with it. can add your final eye hook and I'm sorry I'm so close to off screen. I held it in with super glue just like the other one. Now we can thread it. I did mine all kinds of backwards. You'll want to start by wrapping your thread spool with thread. Best bet is to start one wrap and then super glue it and then just finish wrapping the rest of it. Once you have your spool fully threaded, super glue a piece of sequin on top of it. We'll be working even more with that in part three. Then lace your thread through your two eye hooks. And super glue down towards the end where the needle would be. And with that, it brings us to the completion of the sewing machine itself. Wow. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. Don't forget we will be back for part 3 in the next few days where we will be making the chair and a few things to go in the drawers. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe as it really helps me out a lot and I'll see you next time.